everybody's going to tell you, learn to throw a buzz bait, skip a jig, blah, blah, blah. But I would say if you want to truly make it, the only way you're ever going to make a true living at this, you may win a lot of tournaments, but it's through companies and their marketing dollars, okay, yeah. through sponsors, through endorsement deals. And the only way they're really going to pay you is if you can represent yourself and represent their brands in a, in a great fashion. Hey, y'all, you somehow found yourself at the Fishing Business Podcast, where this week our host is Luke Duncan, who has a wildly entertaining podcast called Low Budget Live, which is all about the ins and outs of the sport of bass fishing. His guests on that show are always exactly who you want to hear from if you're a fan of bass fishing. I'll put a link in the show notes to his show so you can easily find him if you haven't already. Now, this is part two of my interview with Luke. I decided last week that everything we talked about was just too good, but it was also too long. You know how that goes when you start talking to someone and you just get so energized by them and they're so interesting and engaging that you talked for way longer than you planned. By the way, it seems like this happens to me a lot. And at least I think the conversation is interesting. My friends may be saying, remind me to never answer her call again. Golly, she talks too much. Well, that's what happened with Luke. He's so good, y'all. He's just a master of communicating and making the person he's talking to feel at ease. So I broke his interview up into two shows, and this is part two. I know you don't want to hear me talk, but this week we get to hear some great stories from Luke that also hold a lot of value for anyone getting started in this industry and sport. Listen to his stories and think about how you can use the smart things he's done in his career in your own life. Luke's a winner. He knows how to be successful. And you are too, or you wouldn't be listening to this. Here we go, y'all. Actually, Brian Stockel from iCloud, he's the producer, Brian the Cart. Love Brian, Brian the Cart. Yep, love him. Brian reached out to me and he's like, dude, I love what you're doing. But he's like, you got to record these for iTunes. He's like, you're just, you get, you've got great content, but you're wasting your time. Like, yeah. why are you doing this? And we ended, I bought a MacBook and <laughs> said, well, I'll start recording them while we're doing them. So that's kind of how I started. But really, the podcast, as it is right now on iTunes, has only been up there for about a year and a half. Wow. I, I, I haven't that. done it that long. And really, it didn't take off. I was getting I was getting some streams, but when it took off is when I started doing it on YouTube, yeah. to be honest. So to say it went as expected, no. Uh, honestly, it's I say this every week, but it's therapeutic for me. I mm -hmm. like to talk. I'm like you. I'm a huge podcast fan. When I'm dry, on a long road trip, mm -hmm. that's really what gets me through. Um, yeah. I don't listen to a ton of fishing podcasts. To be honest, I, I've got uh, you know friends with the Stray Cast guys, friends with the iClive guys, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift, those guys. But I don't listen to a ton of fishing podcasts. I listen to other things, stand-up comedians that yeah. have their own. There's so many out there that inter interest me. But I did, it's therapeutic for me. And it started, I truly, I, I would, I, when I started doing the not so lives, um, I just set up a microphone at my desk, hooked it to my MacBook and there I went and just yeah. started rambling. And then I start getting comments from people, you know, they, they're enjoying that. And I'm seeing, you know, okay, we're starting to, you know, catch some people's attention here. Um, and YouTube really the last fall, it was last September. I put the first one on YouTube. I believe it was when it was. And that's kind of when it started uh, taking off. And, 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 you know, for me, I learned to, just like I would say to a guest, I learned to be more honest. And I'm not saying I was being dishonest. I was saying that I was, I was holding back. Yeah. And, and for good reason on a lot of things. But I had an incident that happened last fall. And I realized that people will get behind you. If you just tell the truth, right. tell it as you see it. Now, there may be just as many that are going, this guy's crazy. We don't care what he's got to say. But it gained me a lot of listeners that are like, hey, man, this guy's going to tell us right. what he thinks and some behind the scenes stuff that maybe you're not seeing. And so for me, the ride has been anything but what I figured it would be. I didn't yeah. even know when we started where it was headed. And, and as a matter of fact, my, my main sponsor on the podcast, a company called Startron, love those guys. But I started saying sponsored by Startron as a joke <laughs> on Instagram. Like we put a bottle of it on the table as a prop. Like we were just being funny. After we did that, they reached out to me that fall and said, hey, man, we want to be the sponsor of your podcast. Oh, my I'm God, like, I love that story. I, but, but they sponsored my fishing a little bit. But they're yeah. like, hey, we like that. 
We like we that like better that, than yes. the fix. So now they're the official sponsor of everything I've got going. But it was just a it was a joke. And so none of it has gone. And that's why I end every episode by thanking people, even the people that don't like me that listen, you know, yeah. just to kind of hear what I get a sound bite or whatever. It it is so amazing to me that people comment every Monday, man. I'm right here every Monday. Like I, I'm just a redneck from Tennessee, right? And the fact that people enjoy something you've got to say, find you funny, find you endearing. Like, I don't do it for that. I don't do it because I think I sound smart. I don't do it because I think I sound, it's really, it is. It's there. It's therapeutic to me to just kind of go, like when I lost my mother last fall, I talked about that on air well, I and I truly, I just hit record and started talking and, it, and it's not anything I really meant to do, to be honest. Yeah. Like it just, came out in the outpouring, the people that send you messages, I lost my father to cancer, I lost my mother, I lost my brother, that really, it helped me get through that time in my life. Mm -hmm. it, it did. Like, I, I say that with the utmost sincerity, it got me through some of my darkest days. Right. You know, and, it's funny. So, I, um, I've recently experienced a big loss also, and I have written a lot about it on social media. And, and it's, it is amazing how if you're really vulnerable and you let your vulnerable side be seen by people, you're, you know, no, you're not always, you know, a bed of roses. Um, uh, absolutely. I, I think people see themselves in you and, and they, and they, and they're attracted to that. You know, they want to, they want to reach out to you because they, that makes them say, th feel like you're more, you really are more like me than I, of course. Than I realized. You of know? course. And I, I think so much, and you, you talk, we talk this in professional fishing, um, you've got to be on, you're on your game, you're selling for sponsors, blah, blah, yeah. It's the same in sales, right? Yeah. Like it, it sales, in my sales job, I have to be on. I have to be on call, so to speak, for customers. Mm -hmm. But with the podcast, when I kind of strip it back and I can tell people, hey, that's what I got going on, I lost my mother. A month later, I lost my grandfather. When I can talk about that, yeah. and just my wife, I talk to my wife and friends about it, but to just turn on a microphone, strip it all back and just go. It's so therapeutic for me. And if I see something in bass fishing that I want, that I don't agree with, or I do agree with, I think that's what pushes some, some folks, their, their buttons a little bit is that I just don't, I just say it, you know, yeah. and that's all, that's how I am in real life. You're like you the know? Donald Trump of uh, bass oh, wow. fishing. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, just, just by the way, know, just by, and I, I mean, get, by the way, you, you say what you. I get that carried away. No, stuff, but you but, say what a lot of people are thinking. Yeah, I, and that's, I think, I did one last October about some goings on in the industry, and I'll never forget the next day after that thing went live, my text messages of industry friends that would never publicly, I will say that they would never public because yeah. they can't, because right. of their positions. Right. That were just like, man, thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you. Thank you for saying what we're all thinking. Thank right. you for airing this out. And, 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 and look, um, sometimes being that person can get a little carried away as well. And, and yeah. I think you would agree with that. You've got people. I, I don't want to be everybody's martyr all the time either, right? right <laughs> but no. for me, I just want to. I want to. If it's if it's my viewpoint, I'm going to share it with you. Yeah. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent, and and let the cards fall where they may. Well, you know that I, honestly, that was part of my role. That pr people that worked with me at Bass would probably tell you, and they told me they were always like, when we would be in the conference room with these big meetings and the stuff would be talked about, and everybody would be looking at Angie because you knew she was going to say it. You know, <laughs> I was like, the rest That's of it, my, the rest of us might just be thinking it, but she's going to say it. You know, a thousand percent me, my entire yeah. life. You know, and I think, and I have found that through TH Ring calling on customers. Listen, if I've got a widget, this pen, and T. H. Marine says, "Hey, we make this," and I go to a guy and he's like, "Well, should I buy it?" And I'm like, "Eh, doesn't really fit what you do." I mean, I'm not going to sell it to you if I don't think it's, you know what I mean, just to get no. a commission check. That's just yeah. always been because I know he's going to call me two weeks later and go, "Hey, man, this thing." That was always a hard thing for me in sales too, because I would go back to you know the the, the people I reported to and say, 
you know, low budget live is not going to spend any money with us this year because they've had some cuts and they lost some money and they're not going to spend anything. They just don't have it or whatever. And then, and then a couple of weeks later, I might get the message back to go back to Luke and see Absolutely. if he'll do such and such. And I was always like, I don't, I'm feel re, I feel, I feel retarded going back. To yeah. He's already told me no. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know? You know, and you know, you've got your relationship with your customer, so to speak. And, right. and as people, you know, you're not going to get yeah. that. You're not, yeah. you're not gonna, and, and that's where I, I've always feel like that I, I try to play those cards. Like, look, man, you got to know your, you got to know your people and where you stand. Like, I, I'm yeah. never going to, I'm never going to ask a company. That's, that's something going back to what we talked about sponsorship. You also got to know what you're going for. I'd like to add that now. I know I'm jumping yeah. around, but know who you're talking to. I'm you're not going to walk into a bait store in your hometown and then write you a ten thousand dollar check. You yeah, got to know right. that. You got to know that going in. You got to know your your customer, so to speak. Yes. You know? Okay, um, I'll tell you a quick sure. story. I I coached a an angler last fall that was trying to, uh, he needed some help. He was trying to pitch himself to some major brands. And he said, I've got this one guy. I said, okay, well, tell me who you're talking to. I was just trying to get a sense. He said, I've got this one guy that um, a a local business as part of a chain told me to call this guy and gave me a referral. Basically, he didn't call it that, but that's what it was. I gave him a referral. Right. And he said, I've been trying to call this guy and it's his cell phone. I've called him and I've left messages and I've texted him. I've called him and he won't call me back. And I said, well, what does he do for the company? And he said, I don't know. And I said, don't. So I said, okay. Well, after we hung up, I went and Googled who it was. And it was the global CMO for a major, major brand. And the guy was in really good position because he had a personal referral from a franchisee, which is they want to make sure, you know. Absolutely. That's a, you know, they're going to listen to you. But I, so uh, next time I talked to him, I said, listen, you cannot ever call somebody as you don't know because that guy's not going to do a twenty thousand dollar deal you know no. and, and you've you're blowing up his phone he blocked you a long time ago absolutely <laughs> he, he, he swiped left he swiped right. left a long time ago i was like that you know no don't ever call somebody if you don't know what they do what their position is and what they're responsible for yeah or capable of even like have a general idea and i mean sometimes you get surprised i mean we've all been there in sales you're like whoa didn't see that yeah, coming but right. for the most part you can kind of get a read on the situation you know? yeah i agree i agree god you are so good luke I, I i feel so lucky to get you on here today because you know like i said i've ta- i've talked to a lot of people in the marketing world and the business world and fishing but you uh not only understand all of it but you're really good at communicating it which is why you do what you do and well, i really um, appreciate that and it's, it's really good so. Uh, but we're almost out of time. So I'm going to take one more short break and then we'll come okay. back and, but don't y'all don't go away because I, I think, I think you're going to enjoy these last couple of questions with Luke. We'll be right back. Do you know what your personal brand is? Because everyone has a personal brand. You may not be intentional about it yet, but all that you say or do or write or post contributes to how others perceive you. And that my friends is your personal brand. If you want to develop your brand and mean the things you want it to mean, I have a workbook that will help you get started and it's free. You can download my developing your personal brand workbook at www.fishingbusinessschool.com slash brand workbook. Okay, we're back on the Fishing Business Podcast with Luke Duncan from Low Budget Live, the podcast Low Budget Live. Luke, okay, this is my favorite segment of the show because I kind of get to get all over the place here. But so rapid like fire it. kind of questions off the top of your head. And this one, I know, I can't wait to hear what you say. Which words or phrases are most overused in fishing? Swinging for the fences. Oh, that's a good one. That's Drives good one. me nuts. Yeah. And, and yeah. Swind- it's always one of Swindle's things. You're, you're not swinging for the fences, you're lost. You're riding around the circle. <laughs> you didn't catch them. I'm going to go out and swing for the fence. Oh, we swung for the fences all day today. No, you just didn't catch them. Because oh, I'm trying great. to catch the biggest ones I catch every time I go. And a lot of times I just don't buy it. <laughs> Who doesn't? Really? Who doesn't? Right. That's my thing. Yeah, we're really fishing for a big bag tomorrow. What? Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> you're just lost. Okay. If you didn't live in Tennessee, which I'm sure you love and adore, where would you most like to live? I would like to live in Montana. Me I know that. What part yeah, of Montana? I, I'm a, I'm a Western, probably around, so I, I have a deep love for, um, I'm not good at it, but I love fly fishing, I love Me trout too. fishing, and I love the Missouri River, so north <sighs> of Helena, like I really, I love, I love uh, Bozeman and all that, but I'm I really, Bozeman. 
Uh, Craig, Montana. Oh, area, I know exactly right, where that is. Yeah, Missouri River. I love that part of the world. It's a it special, is, special place to me. Uh, I swear, I sometimes when I go out there, and I haven't been a lot lately, but when I go, I'm just like, I, I get there, and I just feel like, uh, Feel like i'm home for some reason you can well, you can breathe there yeah it's a very, um and other than that i mean i would say I, my, my mother instilled a deep love of the beach for me too mm-hmm. so if i could split my time between uh, you, you know the the panhandle and then and, uh and montana, montana. Which two I, different totally different worlds but but that's uh definitely if, yep. I, if i'm allowed two answers it would be to split my time because i'm listen i don't like snow so yeah. i'm gonna get out i'm gonna get out of montana about october Right, right. That's right. That's right. I love that. Um, Okay, what's your most treasured possession? A Gibson J45 acoustic guitar. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, I don't know a lot about guitar. So is that an old guitar? No, well, so, so there are that that's just a specific model. The J45 is, is, it's one of Gibson's most popular models, but um, they're not that expensive, really. But for me at the time, well, I'd saved up uh, it was about twelve hundred dollars, which, which I mean, guitars cost. You know, just depends. But I mean, you can spend yeah. about as much money as you want. To oh yeah. Guitar. And for me, all my favorite songwriters always played J forty fives. And growing up, uh, there was a guy by the name of John Hyatt, a really famous songwriter. But my dad listened to John. Yeah. And and actually listening to John singer songwriter albums, was, I started writing poetry. After oh. listening to him talk about songs as a kid, so a J45 was always like my my thing that I wanted. And, and really, when I first started at TH Marine, I was able to buy one for the first time, and I've still got it, and I hope my kids have it one day. Uh, it's seen a million miles playing bars That's and great. writing songs and everything else, and it always it's it's never far from me. It's, is sure. it like your um, – what is Willie Nelson's guitar name? Trigger. Trigger. Oh, is it Trigger. is that your version of? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one. It's always and I've got six or eight guitars, but it's uh, and I've had more than that at times and less than that at times. But it's always the one. That's great. It, it's That's it's great. like an old pair of socks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite old pair. So, Favorite what is your pair. lastly and to wrap things up here? What is your best advice? If you had only one piece of advice to to give to somebody that's trying to get started in this sport in professional fishing, I would say the biggest thing is is make sure um, you're well-spoken. Everybody's going to tell you, learn to throw a buzz bait, skip a jig, blah, blah, blah. But I would say if you want to truly make it, the only way you're ever going to make a true living at this, you may win a lot of tournaments, but it's through companies and their marketing dollars, okay, through sponsors, through endorsement deals. And the only way they're really going to pay you is if you can represent yourself and represent their brands in a, in a great fashion. And I think speaking clearly, I, I had Roland Martin on one of those low budgets. I'll throw this out there real quick. He said that he told his son, Scott, to go to drama class. I've heard that before, yes. One of the great, because somebody asked in the live chat, uh-huh. hey, Roland, what advice do you have for young air? It was one of the most amazing answers I've ever heard. But it got me, and Scott's mother, or actually Roland's mother was an English teacher. Mm-hmm. Learned how to speak. Learn yeah. how to use proper tense. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> I, right. I mean, that, that's a really big thing. And, and I, I know it jumps out to me, grammar and Instagram mm-hmm. posts and things. And I'm a grammar Nazi, even though I'm not, because I'm a writer. But I'm not great. I'm still, my wife calls me out on things all the time. But yeah. just just represent yourself to the fullest, for sure. Right. I love that. That's great. Well, like I said, I, I, I appreciate you so much. I, I know that it's very little benefit to you to be on a podcast. Oh, I, I, and listen, so I really appreciate you spending the time because it's, well, uh, it's I, I, I appreciate all the things you've done for the industry and your hard work. And, uh, and this is awesome. Uh, right. Thank and, you. And you come from a family that I really, really respect. And uh, oh, that's thank for you. sure. Thank that, you so much. For sure. Thank you that's so much. Sure. And well, maybe one day I can convince you to, to come on again. Hey, we'll do it again. Okay. All right. Okay. Absolutely. See you later, Luke. Thank you. Okay. See what a great guy he is. Just like he comes across on his podcast and on his YouTube channel. There's not a fake or pretentious bone in his body. And when he gives you advice, it's solid because he's been there. Okay. Here's my three key takeaways from the conversation. Number one, have fun. Luke reminded us that fishing is fun. We got into it because it's fun. So have fun with it as you grow your brand and your audience. 
Use your social media and time on the way in stage to tell people about the fun parts, not just the challenging parts. Number two, be resourceful. You heard Luke talk about how he started his podcast by figuring out how to use a $50 adapter to his sound mixer and do live video on Instagram. Then he parlayed that into a successful podcast and YouTube channel with a great big following and an audience who loves him. You can take what you've got around you within reach, even if it's just your cell phone, and turn it into something creative and successful. All you got to do is try. Number three, tell a good story. When you get invited to be on a podcast, or even if the writer for the local newspaper interviews you, be prepared to deliver a good story. All this really requires is a little thought. Think about a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. If it includes something funny, that's a bonus. And P.S., learn to be comfortable speaking, speaking in front of an audience, speaking on the phone, speaking on video or in person. It's really important because like Luke said, it's an old cliche, but you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Well, I tell you, I love this week's show. I'm inspired and I'm fired up now. Hey, I've got a good resource that goes along with today's episode that you can download for free. It's the Fishing Business School Guide to Working with the Media, and you can find it at fishingbusinessschool.com slash media. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's got good tips that, that you'll want to keep on how to work with content creators, whether they're newspaper writers, television producers, bloggers, or podcast hosts fishingbusinessschool.com slash media. Okay, I've got to run, y'all. Please be sure to rate and review this podcast on YouTube or your podcast platform, and I'll dance at your wedding if you leave a nice comment. I want to know what you think about this podcast. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm going to close out the show just like my favorite fishing show host always closed out his show, The Fishing Hole, by saying this is dedicated to dad because he always had time to take me fishing. See you next time, y'all.